G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, I'd just like to thank everybody for supporting the channel over the last month. It's been a really impressive amount of uh, views, subs, everything like that. I finally hit the four digit gains in terms of subscribers, which I haven't done since I've started full time work. So I'd like to thank you guys a lot for that. That really means a lot to me and I'd really love to keep that going because at the end of the day, 100k subs is my ultimate goal. Um, and of course, we'd like to push it past that, but you know, that would be a sort of nice thing to, to reach and we're just over halfway there. And if we can get to 70k subs this year, at the end of this year, I would, I would be really impressed. But uh, anyway, ladies and gents, this plane has been fairly highly requested among a lot of those of you that fly jets. And that is the CL-13 Mark II or Mark VI or CL-13B Mark VI. Now, this plane is a kind of a conundrum because it is a fairly powerful saber. I would argue it's the strongest saber that uh, is resembling an F-86. Now, this thing, as I understand it, is a some sort of F-saber up-engined or A-saber up-engined. And it's got missiles and it's got, uh, I believe, wing slats as well. So this thing is a fairly impressive beast. It's got a very powerful engine. It's got excellent energy retention. It's got fairly good top speed and fairly good uh, sort of roll rate and enough turning to get by. It's also got two AIM-9Bs, which aren't exactly amazing at 9.7, and that's where the problems with this plane lie. This plane is a 9.7, which means it is up there with the English Electric Lightning, the MiG-19, and the F-105 Thunderbeef. It's ridiculous how high this plane is for, way, for how it performs. It's a subsonic, non-afterburning, non-radar carrying, no flares, no chaff. It's just a subsonic, plain old gunfighter with two AIM-9Bs. And yet, it's 9.7. Up there with planes that have radar-guided missiles, with planes that have R-60s, you know? It's up there with the Yak-38M. Same battle rating. It's up there with the AV-8A, which has 240 countermeasures. It's up there with the F-105D, which has a top speed of Mark 1.3 at sea level and carries three tons plus of bombs. The CL-13B has none of that. It has 50 cals for guns, it's got AIM-9Bs for missiles, and it doesn't have any remarkable performance that would maybe suggest that it should be at this battle rating. So, why is it at such a high battle rating? Well, maybe the title might give that away. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the types of enemies that I'll be coming up against and the calibre of the enemies that I'm coming up against. Notice how they throw away their planes. And now, I don't mean this in a bad way. It is entirely possible that these players might not be as experienced as myself and I'm able to exploit that. Maybe I'm being an asshole about it. But you'll see in this match that a lot of the enemies that I face are actively throwing their planes away. They're not playing as conservatively as you might expect. They're not playing as smart as you might expect. And as a result, they're being cleaned up by a plane that is, by all means, inferior. And that is kind of what gives this thing its incredible reputation. I mean, according to Gaijin at least. Now, this MiG-21 PFM manages to get swept up by an SPSK, which is kind of expected, but the reason is a little bit uh, annoying. If you might, if you might let me uh, let me say that, because he basically just went for ground targets and did nothing else. This MiG-21 that I'm coming in on is very, very slow. I'm not even sure why he's this slow. Maybe he really wants that MiG-21 behind me, but that's going to be a death for him because he's turned, he's slow, he's lost all his speed, and now he's an easy prey for me. So. What about the planes that are really, really good, like the F-105D, or the F-4C, or the A-5C? These are planes that you literally can't do much against if they play properly. In fact, a lot of these planes, if you are playing properly, you shouldn't be able to touch them at all. If you're in a Lightning and you get caught with your pants down by a CL-13, that means that you've done something incorrect. A Harrier, you know what, I can kind of understand, because whilst the Harrier is very fast, that's pretty much all it's got. It's got countermeasures, but if you do one turn, you bleed a lot of speed. And this thing is a ground attacker after all. So it is a fairly uh, unwieldy thing. But something like a MiG-21, MiG-21 climbs quite well. It's very agile. 
But whilst it bleeds a lot of speed, it means that you have to fly it with discipline. And a lot of War Thunder players, I don't know if it's just me getting old and cynical as a War Thunder in, in terms of War Thunder player, but I've noticed that a lot of the player base just tends to play a little bit more recklessly. And that just results in a lot of planes that would otherwise be fine being wasted. Now I almost take out my friendly in the SP, SP, yeah, SPSK there. But this AV-8C is, I wouldn't say he throws away his plane, because his plane is quite unwieldy. But because the enemy team has either been distracted by others or has thrown away their plane, the AV-8C is kind of left to die. The F-5C here is a 10.3 and it's probably the biggest threat here because it can do some fairly aggressive turning and this F-105D we'll see a little bit later. But these particular planes are just going to run rings around me provided that they play it properly. And this particular F-5, whilst maybe he doesn't play it properly, maybe he does, uh, but he's coming in pretty close and I managed to get a critical hit. But it, in my opinion, if you were playing the F-5C and you came within that distance to a CL-13B, you are doing something wrong because this plane does 1250 on the deck. It has flares, it has uh, chaff, it has plenty of acceleration, plenty of thrust, and there is pretty much no reason that you should be getting anywhere near the CL-13 as long as you're playing it properly. This F-105 here is the one player that I would, I would say plays this plane properly. He's very fast and he's using his speed to his advantage. Now, I managed to go for a very quick, super sketchy head on, um, but we don't trade any blows. And being in this situation here, the F-105 is miles faster than me. The CL-13 just can't keep up. But I have so much turning that it is not funny. And the F-105D, all he has to do is wait for me to either full commit to a head-on because he's got the better one second burst mass than me, or he can just uh, run me down and try and energy, energy trap me. Except, if I'm playing this plane properly, then he can't do that. So we end up with this weird stalemate. And you'll see that happen later on. This plane is so slow that you can't run anyone down at this battle rating. Even some of the uh, attackers, like the A5, uh, the AB8 and the uh, Yak 38s, you're not going to run them down. They're actually faster than you at sea level. And of course, when they get to a higher altitude, they can outclimb you. The J32B here is probably going to be my last hope because what you rely on in the CL13B is you rely on distracting people. And you rely on getting those people that are not paying attention and scooping them up when they're not looking. And if you don't have any of those, you're pretty much shit out of luck. In this case here, I rely on planes like the F-4C and the F-105D to make a mistake. Otherwise, I basically don't stand a chance. All I'm going to do is turn fight all day, and all the F-4C is going to do is boom and zoom me all day. And even though I've got an AIM-9B left, that's fairly easy to dodge. And even though the F-4C and the uh, F-105 all have missiles, they are also fairly easy to dodge. And if I keep to sea level, then I'm going to have a fairly easy time. Now, I miss my shots here, and I almost plant myself into the ground, but this plane is still maneuverable enough to make these types of aggressive maneuvers at this altitude. Now, the F4C, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and bait him into a turn fight that he thinks he's going to win, because maybe he thinks I'm stock and I can't turn, or he's going to get a little bit more aggressive and try and get those spicy kills. But I'm really banking on the psychology here instead of the plane's capabilities, and for me, that's not really a great way to have a dogfight. What I would much rather is a dogfight based on the skills of each pilot and the planes being very close in performance. In this case, they're kind of the polar opposite of performance. One turns really well and is extremely slow, and the other is extremely fast but turns quite poorly. In the case of missiles, I would consider that they are both null and void because you can dodge both of them provided that you play the plane correctly. In terms of the AIM-7s, you just have to stay at low altitude for the F-4C and the F-3H Demon, which is also at this battle rating containing the, uh, the radar guided missiles, has a pretty crappy radar that can be defeated by ground clutter quite easily. Now, this F-4C has decided to full commit and you can see the turns that I'm making are fairly, fairly uh, risky, if you would say. If they were in any other plane against any other enemy, I would probably have ended up on the wrong side. And you can see how close I come to actually getting on the wrong side of the guns of this plane. But because I've played my plane correctly, and because he has played his plane incorrectly, I end up with the victory here. Think about the three planes that I've collected so far. The three planes. MiG-21 PFM, I've collected, uh, I believe it was another MiG-21, and the F-4C. 
these are all planes that could have been fast. They could have been above me. They could have been boom and zooming me. They could have been uh, with me at altitude with a radar missile or something like that. And they could have killed me very, very easily. Now, this F5 here is our, uh, our next enemy. And he's going to be a tough adversary. I haven't gone back to base, by the way. I still have 20 minutes of fuel uh, down to 12. And the F5C here in a vertical is probably going to overshoot because he's just got so much more uh, ability to accelerate at this uh, at this altitude. But you can see here that he's played himself quite poorly once again. And the only reason why I'm able to escape is because he's full committed and he's come so close that even flares won't work for my A9B. And so I get myself an easy kill with 200 rounds to spare. This is the type of dogfights that you'll find yourself winning in the CL-13. You might think, great, that sounds awesome. But what if you've got someone that knows how to play their plane? You, I mentioned the F-105 a lot earlier, and you know what? I'm just going to speed up this gameplay here. Uh, it's about, uh, I think it's a thousand percent, so ten times the, uh, the gameplay. So what we're seeing here is basically the remaining maybe ten or fifteen minutes of the match. And it is excessively boring. All I'm doing is waiting for the F-105 to come back, turning out of his way, and watching him jet off into the horizon. Because the F-105D is so damn fast, and it is now just me and him against each other, there is literally nothing that I can do except go back to my base, rearm, repair, and maybe hope to get him with an AIM-9B if he's not paying attention. But it's clear that he is playing his plane properly, and he is paying quite a lot of attention. So what am I supposed to do? And the answer is nothing. And that's the conundrum that the CL-13B finds itself in. It's a perfectly capable plane, if your enemies are complete crap. But the moment you have a single enemy that knows what they're doing, the plane becomes almost garbage. Almost frustrating to fly. And don't get me wrong, this plane is perfectly capable. But not against the F-105. And certainly not in a full up tier. In a full up tier, maybe against the MiG-19s and other planes like that. But this match dragged on for so long that the timer expired, and it was the most batshit boring match that I have played of War Thunder in years. So, moving on, we are in a down tier, which is great news because I can finally fight things that are of a similar performance tier. And these planes can still beat me in a dogfight. The MiG-17, if you play your plane correctly, you have the low speed advantage over the CL-13. You also are, I believe, lighter. So if you play on your air brakes, if you play on your flaps, you have plenty of opportunity to take out a CL-13B. Especially with the two missile pylons, you have that extra drag, and it actually does make the difference. So, the F-4C gets an AIM-9B, but unfortunately he turns out of the way just in time. I really shouldn't be wasting AIM-9Bs on players that are already uh, preoccupied like this. Now, this MiG-17 comes up behind me, and I'm going to fire, or get it in the out of the way of his fire rather, and try and go into the vertical. Now, I know the MiG-17 has really good energy retention, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and bleed a bit of speed and get myself into the sort of mid uh, 500s, the low 400s, uh, maybe even the high 300 km per hour airspeeds, where I'm going to have a little bit more of an advantage. Not so much, but you can see that now I'm having to pull out the air brakes because the MiG-17 is actually playing his cards quite well here. He's sort of trying to hang behind me. He might actually have a little bit of damage, I'm not quite sure, but... He's playing very, very aggressively here, and it looks like he doesn't have his air brakes out. If he had his air brakes out, I would actually think that he would come out on top of this. But, you know, he's uh, kind of wasting his plane. He's kind of playing super aggressively, and he's managed to put himself in a very compromising position here. It looks like he's got some damage of his tail, maybe his engine, and it's just a matter of time before I finish the MiG-17 off, just because he's overshot his mark, and he's managed to make a little bit of a mud pie of himself. And uh, I'm just going to sort of try and finish that off with the 50 cals. Now, the 50 cals are, are plenty good. They're good enough. Uh, but you need a fair bit of gun time. And this plane thrives on those sort of slower engagements. You're not going to get good kills at like 800 plus kilometers an hour. Because 50 cals need a lot of time on target. And time on target is something that you don't get at higher speeds. So try and aim for those lower speeds. See if you can pick up those low speed dogfights. But you know what? When you're facing things like the F-105D, you're not going to get those dogfights. They're just not going to come, because the F-105D, if they're going to play at those slow speeds, like sub-600, then you're really wondering what this guy's doing, because it's not a good speed for any of the supersonic jets to be fighting at. If you're fighting at this speed, it better be against another supersonic, and you better be 
uh, in a very, very definite 1v1. Otherwise, you're going to get creamed by someone else. Now, speaking of getting creamed, the SU7 here is just not paying attention. So that makes it a very, very easy kill for me, giving me kill number one. And it looks like my team's just decided to do a heck and disappear. So this is very, very bad news for me. This leaves me against a lot of enemies. And you'll find that when you are against a lot of enemies, you'll have a bit of fun, actually. It's almost more fun than if your team just completely ruffle stops because you end up having dogfights because people are going to play more aggressive when there are fewer enemies around. And of course, that's a perfectly valid strategy because if someone is uh, going after three targets, it's more likely that they won't target you than they will. Uh, and of course, we get some uh, really good servers because Gadget's got some great quality servers. So uh, we're just experiencing that wonderful, wonderful stuff. I had a stream going in the background that was running fine, but uh, Gaijin decided, no, you don't get some good quality internet. So um, unfortunately for me, I end up with a very serious A5 situation. But you know what? I'm going fast enough that I can actually dodge a March of Magic. It's not that hard. You just need to stay fast. You multiply your uh, your forces by going in different distances. And it ends up being a fairly, fairly high uh, level of return on those uh, dodging. Now, the F4C here is deciding to commit fairly heavily to me. And it looks like I'm going to come in for a quick hit. I get a critical hit on his right wing. And this is good news for me because that means that I can finish him off if I get the chance. But the A5C is around and I don't know if he's spared his last missile. That being said, I think I am going to give chase and see what I can do just in case I can run him down. But I'm too slow. I just don't have the performance. You can see that even when he's damaged, I'm sure he's got some engine damage there. He is still going to blaze away from me like there's no tomorrow. And that's due to the afterburner and the whopping great fuck off engines that the F4C has. Meanwhile, the CL-13 is uh, kind of stuck with some, I would say, I wouldn't say lousy engines, but certainly engines that aren't quite up to the task of being a 9.7. So this leaves me with a whole one kill and a critical hit and a hit on the Yak-28. Now we have some competition. F3H2, this is going to be some good dogfighting. The F3H2 has some wicked turning capabilities, but it bleeds a lot of speed in turns, and this is something that I can actually use to my advantage. You can see how quickly the F3H is coming in, and it looks like he's bled so much speed that he's realized that he is in trouble. Have a look at how much energy I'm able to put on top of him, and this is why this plane is so good, because it is a really good low-speed dogfighter. It doesn't fit the meta of those higher speeds, just because it sucks at those speeds. It's got 50 cals, it's got shit missiles, but have a look at how able the F3H is in a dogfight. My god, even at those low, low speeds, I've or overshot. I've done fucked up. I've overshot and I need to find a way to uh, redeem myself. And it looks like the F3H has done that for me. He's overrolled, and I managed to get some more hits on him, putting a little bit of air break out. And this gives me the opportunity to sort of slide in. But with the air break out, I'm actually struggling to dogfight the F3H just because he's so damn good at those low speed maneuvers. This is a dogfight that I can enjoy. This is something that I can get into. Now, the MiG-17 uh, manages to come into the head on and the F3H crashes into the ground just because he's so slow and he's been so heavily damaged. Now, this Yak-28 is coming in for me. I think I'm going to go for a quick little head-on, see if I can uh, do some damage, but I know I can't commit to him because he's got that frontly mounted 23mm. So I don't get any hits, but I'll get the kill for him later. So that's all that matters. Now, I am against a fair few enemies, and this is starting to really wear down on me. I've got a little bit of damage to that wing, uh, but it shouldn't hinder too much of a dogfight. And it looks like we have another MiG-17 coming in. This one's quite slow. Maybe he's been damaged by some AA. Um, and something right behind me comes out of nowhere, and it must be the A5C. I was lucky that he didn't have any guns or any missiles on me. So I miss all my shots like a real true pro. As you can tell, like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, I'm a very experienced pilot, and I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, and so I decide that I'm going to get uh, jumped by the AV-8. This is probably the nail in the coffin for me. I'm pretty damn low on uh, on a healthy plane. The inside of my wings is damaged, which, which means... My lift capabilities are severely hindered. The F4C has fired a missile. He's firing another missile. The A5C is coming in. This is pretty much it. Uh, the only thing I could really do here is turn my engine off, but that's not going to save me from the A9E. And that's game. I come away with four kills. I, I actually had fun dying in this match because I had so much more capability. I could do so much more. But ladies and gentlemen, the F... Uh, the... the CL-13B is just in a really bad spot. And you know what? That's due to battle rating compression. Who, who would have known? 
Anyway, ladies and gents, that's enough for today. I thought you might like to see this video and to sort of just see how the CL13B turns out in a match, and lo and behold, nothing has really changed. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, there are plenty of links down below. Of course, you are more than welcome to use the uh, store link to buy my decal and get a 3% discount. That really helps. That adds up, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.